The majority of people <laughs> are welcoming. That's my my perception why, of it. Why, why laugh, Iman, at that? You are not a black person. So. When people speak like you and push that narrative out... What did I say that was racist? Please speak a bit louder Garrett, for me, no, please. No, no, we're we're going going to call this. Oh, my, oh, thank you very you. much, Anne and Stephen. That was great. Yeah, thank thanks you. for being here. Well... Pleasure. You won't be back, I can tell you that. Welcome back to Rattlesnake TV, guys. In this video, we are going to be watching one of the most insufferable race hustling activists debating whether or not the British countryside is racist and white supremacist with a Welsh farmer. And I must warn you, this one gets ugly and paints the picture of a once great civilization laying lifeless on the floor whilst useless activists piss on its corpse. So with that, let's get into the first bit. Here's a question for you. Is the countryside racist? Well, the Wildlife and Countryside Link, a charity group which includes the RSPCA, WWF and National Trust, says the British countryside is a racist colonial white space. MPs in an all-party parliamentary group were told that the countryside has been influenced by racist colonial legacies, created an environment some fear is dominated by white people. So think about it. It sounds very woke, just like that. But the more you think about it, maybe you've had experience of something like that. Joining us now is anti-racism activist Iman Ayton, who thinks the countryside could be racist, and farmer Gareth Wynne-Jones, who thinks it's not. So we ought to hear from you first, I suppose, um, the, the idea that it's this colonial white space that's not welcoming to anyone of a different hue. OK, well, firstly, uh, I don't fully subscribe to that. I think it's safe to say this whole entire country is a colonial space, so that's not fully accurate, let's just be fair on that. But I have to admit, this comes down to the fact that this whole entire, entire country has been proven to be racist or have issues with racial prejudice. So the countryside is not exempt from that. And what people fail to realise is that in these particularly kind of... Uh, these spaces that are particularly dominated by white people, it can end up being kind of... Um, it can feel quite exclusive. The reason why is because these individuals share the same culture, same values, which includes food, language, music, etiquette, manners, hobbies, etc. So when someone new comes along, that's different. Um, they can end up standing out like a sore thumb. They can end up not potentially fitting in. And then they also have to contend with the racial prejudice that kind of lies within that area. So oh. there's that interesting dynamic of not necessarily fitting in because you're different and then also racial prejudice that we have in this country. But I wonder if that... Is that feeding too much into it in the sense, as a northerner... What do you mean? Well, because as, as a northerner... Yeah. You know, someone new moves into the village... Yes. ..or whatever, who's, yep. who's a southerner, yep. for example, and it's very odd. Yes, right? it, it exactly. But, yeah, but... Exactly. But, but, I, but I don't think that's any different to the rest. I, I can't no, imagine. I can't things. imagine anyone I know thinking having an, an additional layer of prejudice, or, or you know, oh, it's a stranger. Ah, well, in the that's where you're wrong, black. sir. We all have prejudice. Prejudice comes in many forms. Racial prejudice. We can have prejudice based off of. Doesn't mean um, we have to have it though. Does no, it? no, no, no. It, it's actually a part of our brains. It's actually called social categorising. It's a part of our brain. Basically, it just means that we simplify everything around us, and so we put things into boxes which means that we assume yeah, things. But surely you so it's actually a normal cognitive process of the brain. So when you talk about you don't know anyone that has extra layers, I do apologise, Anne, but we do have extra layers of prejudice. We have our own prejudice and yeah, we have prejudice but, in other areas okay, such look, as look, the, the race, issue here, gender, etc. Et real... So just before we hear from Gareth, the Welsh farmer, I want to take a moment to just acknowledge what we are hearing here. This activist wants to sit there and claim that the United Kingdom is such a racist, white supremacist, colonial heritage country that is so hostile to other races whilst she, a black woman, sits there on national television shitting on the country and its history and its native population, having achieved precisely zero in her life that would suggest that her opinion is one worth listening to. And yes, people have an in-group bias. As a matter of fact, I lived in East London for three years and I happened to notice that the Pakistani immigrant population were not exactly jumping out of their skin with eagerness to try and assimilate to British culture. They were not trying to ingratiate themselves with the native population of whose country 
they moved into. Instead, they would form distinct cultural enclaves. So it is part of human nature that we have an in-group bias. But the only reason that the British are having to contend with this is because they have had millions of people brought into their country from the third world. I mean, the sheer unabashed chutzpah that you would have to possess to tell these people, you must take in millions and millions of immigrants and change the face of your once great country forever. And this is your new reality. You've got to deal with it. But not only do you have to deal with it, you've got to love it, bitch. And if you even dare so much as raise an objection, you, are a white supremacist. Got it, Whitey? And now let's listen to this farmer give his thoughts. And this is where it starts to get ugly. The issue here is whether, because this is what, what came up, uh, this all parli party parliamentary committee. The, the issue is how lovely little villages that mm. we think of as beautiful English villages or, you know, Welsh, Irish, Scottish, anywhere. Um, the quintessentially British sort of village life mm. um, is... The, the idea is that it, it is so white, um, and historically so as well, that it's not welcoming to anyone of a different skin colour or whatever. Let, let's go to Gareth. Um, I mean, I, I, where, where you live, for instance, do you believe that you, you are prejudiced towards white people or not welcoming to anyone else? Do you know what? I've lived my life in the countryside and I've never come across racism. You know, and I've got a lot of friends of all ethnic backgrounds. Now, I'll give you an example. So a few years ago, in our beautiful little Welsh village called Llanfair Vechan, and it's a fantastic, beautiful place, um, the local Nissa shop, or spa as it was then, was taken over uh, by Mr Pasham, OK, an Indian guy. And he came in, and what a gentleman. And let me tell you, during COVID... And during lockdown, that man was running around this village with packets for old people. And, you know, at, at Christmas, when I went in there, he would give me a box of thatchers uh, just to thank me for giving him his customer. He's a lovely guy. Now, one of the guys that works there had gone away for a couple of weeks. Uh, he's an Indian as well. And he went away for a couple of weeks and he came back. And this is what he told my wife the other day. He said um, he'd been to London and when he came back to work in the shop, everybody came into the shop and asked him where he'd been, that they'd missed him. So it's poppycock that these people are trying to call the countryside racism. Anybody that wants to come and work and fit in will fit in. Anybody that wants to come in and think that we're racist or racism happens will have it in their mindset. So it is a choice, you know, for the individual, but the majority of people <laughs> are welcoming. That's my my perception why, of it. Why, why laugh, Iman, at that? Guys, just before we get back to the clip, if you don't mind just quickly smashing that like button for me, helps me out enormously. And if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, of course, only if you're getting value and you wanna be here, then feel free to do so. Back to the clips. Okay, so I appreciate your your anecdotes about your shopkeeper and etc. I, I appreciate that story, but the reality is, sir, with all due respect, firstly, you are not a black person, so you can't actually speak in terms of lived experiences. Let me finish, please. You can't actually speak on lived experiences of black people. So when you say there's no racism, well, that's from your perspective, with your lived experiences, as a white man. What we can talk about is the many experiences of black and brown people that have actually moved into the countryside. The BBC actually did a whole really good article about a lovely man. His name was Jag Patel. He spoke about the fact that he moved into the countryside and just was so shocked at the amount of prejudice that he had to contend with. And this is why I speak about the lack of diversity, because what happens when you don't have many black and brown people in a particular area is that you end up leading with prejudicial views because you don't have a lived experience all right, of a certain thing. So he, he, all right, I'm assuming it is prejudice. Yeah, but, and that but, but makes what an you're area doing, quite because, hostile. Forgive me, but what... So this but, is why no, families, let me get, let me get a word in. I'm not I'm actually no, no, referring no, to this gentleman. No, 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 this but is I've why got families a, but, end up feeling as if they're dealing with abuse, please. more abuse than probably in metropolitan areas. Yeah. And that is my point, sir. Can you I don't have that lived experience. So consider other experiences of black and brown people. Please go ahead, Stephen. I do apologise. I just wanted to finish yeah, my point I know, but you're not going to forgive me, me, but you're not going to get very far if you don't allow 
People, you interrupted people, me. Yes, but that you is my, but me. That is my job. job. No, yes, it's that is my not. job. And my job is because, to make sure I say my piece. Because, so we've both got a job today, Stephen. Yeah, but, but the point is, what you did there... Mm. Is you brought up a case example hmm, of someone like, of, just of, like this lovely yes, gentleman? Yes, but, but you dismiss his case example. Zero. Oh, this person had, it's had, called had a, a debate. Ha, had, had, a, had a racist a report. experience. Can I please but his racist experience. experience Stephen, what his, on earth are you talking but about? That his racist I offered a retort to this that, lovely gentleman's story about the But that racist about experience the may well be in the minority, actually, of and what is going just on. Just like this, exactly. So exactly, I'm, I'm actually going to validate your point. It could be in the minority, just like this gentleman. He's actually talking as if he can speak speak on behalf of all of the countryside. No, he's not. As he's no, actually, he's not. Yes, no, he's, he's not. actually talking as... He just said it categorically. No, Listen he didn't. to the words. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. He just said that there is no racism in the countryside. Well, let's give him and a chance what, to speak He just said now. it. I wish I could say that it actually doesn't get a lot worse from here, but unfortunately, it does. I mean, what we've just seen here is this farmer come into the conversation with the utmost dignity, grace, compassion and open-mindedness, the very embodiment of what the good guy looks like. And I really don't want to have to belabor this point too much, but I feel like I have to really illustrate and elucidate the bigger picture point that I'm making here, especially for those of you who have never visited the British countryside. The British countryside is an incredibly beautiful and peaceful place with steep grassy hills, rugged moors, tranquil lakes and flowing rivers. These picturesque landscapes are typically flanked by winding country roads and estates that might cradle a small village where you'll find an old English church, a traditional pub and thatched cottages that are inhabited by people whose grandparents knew each other. And this experience and this atmosphere is the very essence of British culture. This is the fusion of Roman influence that preceded the several centuries of Germanic immigration that led to the Anglo-Saxons converting to Christianity and building great monasteries and works of art such as Beowulf. It's the Celts, the Normans, the monarchy, the Church of England, it's Shakespeare, and this, our life, exempt from public haunt, finds tongues in the trees, books in the brooks, sermons in the stones, and good in everything. It's the history of medieval knights in shining armor that would live and die by the virtues of chivalry. Virtues such as piety or devotion to God, valor or courage and bravery, in battle, gallantry towards women, prudence, honor, temperance, and the rest. And this is the culture that gave rise to the quintessential swaggering English gentleman, dressed in English cloth with a waistcoat and a glove and a pipe hanging out of his mouth. You see, this is a rich and wonderful Christian culture, and key word there, Christian culture. What you see when you travel to the English culture in the places that haven't been ruined are the last vestiges of one of the great shining beacons of human civilization. And this Welsh farmer, like so many others, is doing his best to contend with the changes that are happening around him. And these aren't changes that are happening because of the fall of the Roman Empire or because Norsemen are invading your shores. These are changes that have been thrust upon these people from an incompetent and at times malicious government. And like so many others, he's being as gracious as he possibly can. He's saying we accept those who want to come and and be a part of our culture, whilst also trying to maintain his own human dignity, saying that we are not bad people, we are not racist white supremacists, we are good moral people, and we love and want the best for our fellow man. We are merely saying, you may come into our home, but you must take your boots off at the door. And what does she do? She laughs at him, belittles him, and basically tells him to shut up because he's white. That's my, my perception. I appreciate that story, but you are not a black Persons. And now let's watch the rest of the video, which illuminates in an even worse way the insufferable character of this woman. And I'll give some thoughts up. Yeah, let's get Stephen, Gareth, Gareth you come need back to listen. Oh. You need to listen. <sighs> Gareth, oh, go on. Gareth. I, I, I really cannot believe what you've just said. You've got go no ahead, idea um, what I do. And um, let me just let me just tell you. Yeah, I have been under the cosh because you know what. I'm first language Welsh. I'm first language Welsh. But you're not black. But I appreciate you. Can I Thank finish, you. please? Black. Can you give me an Because we're talking about racism in terms of racism no, towards that, black people. Listen, are we? the Welsh language yeah, we was oppressed for years and years and years. The Welsh language, when the children would go to school, they would put the colonial, Welsh knot yeah, around Yeah, colonialism will throats. do that. They would put a Welsh knot around their necks to stop them from speaking the Welsh language. Colonialism. We know what oppression is. We're now I getting there, Gareth. We're getting there you, now. 
No, no, no. Listen no, to me. Are. I we am are. open I know it, it hurts, and I'm open-minded. I think you are closed. You are closed-minded, and you're looking for the negatives. And you, that's what you made it clear problem. you were very closed-minded, sir, because you left the with sweeping statements. That's what causes the not. problem and racism is when people speak like you and push that narrative. What did I say out that was racist, sir? I, I, what did I, I say that was racist, you, sir? Please, not, please make it clear, I, Gareth. What did I say that was racist? You just said no, that people like me are, are the ones that are racist. Please narrative. make it clear. What is what is it that I said that was racist? I didn't no? say. I said you're pushing the narrative. That no, you didn't say that, though, did you? The you're now correcting yourself, Gareth. Look, you didn't say that originally. On. You're just picking. OK, you're never just... mind. Yeah, it's rewind time. When people speak like you and push that narrative What did I say that was oh. You didn't say that originally, oh, though, did you? You yeah, said that I was racist you know and I gave you an opportunity to make that clear as to what it is that I said that was racist and you have failed, so no problem. We can move on. I don't want to linger on this particular point. Well, are you retarded? Oh, absolutely. OK, well, we'll leave it there. Imam Aiton. ...language and towards the people. Sorry, That's, Gareth, I can't hear you. There oh, is no, there is no I racism. I can't hear him. You just heard me, and I can't hear him. Please speak a bit louder Gareth, for me. No, please, no, 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 we're going to call this... We'll call all a halt to this, because this is okay. getting out of order. OK, Imam, no thank you very much. Thank you, Gareth. Gareth. Thank you very much. Appreciate and you. our apologies if you felt you didn't quite get uh, enough of us say. Of course not. Uh, another day, hopefully. Another thank day. very much. Another time. Thanks, Anne. Oh, right. No, I did huffing and puffing in the background, but it's fun to. It, I, t I tell you what we like to do on this channel is mm. is is listen to other people and then try and absorb that. Okay, points. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave now because I'm not going to let you speak on behalf of the whole entire channel. No, please I've been do doing. Please yeah, do I'm leave. going to. Yeah. Don't no, worry don't. about that. It's a, it's a shame that right. it's a shame that it couldn't have finished a bit more Isn't cordial. It, it, yeah. it is, but it's yeah. clear where your alliances lie. Oh, my oh, God. Thank you Steve. very much, Anne and Stephen. That was great. Yeah, thank thanks you. for being here. Well... Pleasure. You won't be back, I can tell you that. No, I definitely won't be, Anne. <laughs> thank you for making it dead clear as to how I was feeling. Mm. I appreciate uh, you. Well, yeah, unfortunately, your mic is off. So well done there to Gareth for not losing his cool. He is a better man than me because that lady is absolutely vile. The way that she just acted was beneath human dignity, or as we would say in Australia, that was lower than shark shit. But this, guys, is what happens when the lunatics are running the asylum. These are the people who are postulating on the behalf of the oppressed and the minorities. They will mount their moral high horse and lecture the British about their colonial past. But when you scratch away the paper thin facade, you soon realize that these are vicious people and they lack any semblance of civility or desire for peace and common ground. Activists, race hustlers, cultural Marxists like this, they are the barbarians at the gates, circling the city and waiting to sack it. And one of the demographics that it really makes you feel for is the immigrant population of these countries who have a desire to work hard, contribute to the economy, assimilate, because this just causes an unnecessary tension for them. And I'll leave you with this quote for you to chew on, interpret it however you would like in the context of the video. And it's a quote from Jordan Peterson where he's talking about secular societies, where he's being asked why it is that secular societies are the most stable. Well, moral, I would say they're, they're stable to the degree that they're actually not secular. And uh, this is also a Nietzschean observation and a Dostoevskian observation for that matter is that we're living on the corpse of our ancestors like we always have. That's a very old idea. Mm. But that, run, you, that, runs, that stops being nourishing and starts to become rotten unless you replenish it. And I don't think we are replenishing it. We're in danger of running. We're living on borrowed time and in danger of running out of it. So that's it from me today, guys. Really looking forward to reading your thoughts on this one. If you'd like to reach me, you can hit those links that are just below in the comments and at the top of the bio. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel right here, and if you'd like to watch another video right here. Till next time, I'm Jake. This is Rattlesnake TV, keeping you armed and dangerous.